Hello, my name is Keshwani. This K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn algebra. Today is our lesson number 10. The problems are already on the blackboard. We have five expressions and we have to find we have to evaluate their value. Evaluate them or find their value, not evaluate their value. That will be too, too redundant. Yeah, because too redundant itself is redundant, it will be redundant. Uh, I'm done. Okay, let's get If a equals 3, b equals 2, c equals 0, p equals 5, q equals 10, and r equals 6, what are the value of these what, what are the values of these expressions? a squared times b times p over p times q, a times b cubed times p over q minus p times a plus b a cubed times b to the 4 times c squared times p cubed over a plus b plus c r times p times r cubed over a squared times b squared times 2 cubed a squared times b times p over b plus b times p whole squared I will give you a few seconds to pause and unpause the video as usual because I want you to solve these things yourself first come up with the answers and then do, a, do it again the second time with me and see if you can come up with the same answers that's the idea so here we go, I'll give you 5 seconds to pause and unpause. Very good. Number 1. Number 1. A squared, which is 3 squared, times B, which is 2, times P, which is 5, over p which is 5 times q which is 10 now notice what happens I, we see top 5 on the bottom and we see a 5 on the bottom what does the 5 on the bottom represent? 5 on the bottom represents p and what does the 5 on the top represent? it represents p which means we could have if we wanted to even before we did any of this work we could have written as from the very beginning a squared times b times over times p over p times q from the very beginning the thing to do the smart thing to do would have been I see a p at the bottom I see p at the top let's divide the top and the bottom by p we can we can kill these two p's so it's basically a squared times b over q a squared times b over q let's simplify it a, a squared which is 3 times 3 over times 2 over 10 let's divide the top and the bottom by I lost the cap let's divide the top and the bottom by 2 that takes care of this 2 and this becomes 5 and there is nothing common between 3's and the 5 so the answer is going to be 9 over 5 which is not what I have here bloody hell one more time a squared times b times p a squared times b times p over oh this is weird alright so the answer is 9 over 5 I have to learn to pay more attention because in my notes here as I solved the problem this wasn't a p this was a q and it was 6 times q 6 times 10 and this if had this been q had this p been q then we would not have been able to cancel them out and the whole problem would have been different but anyway for this particular problem the answer is 9 over 5 let's go on to the next one 9 over 5 number 2 I'm going to fix this thing in my notes because if I wait I'm going to forget it number two a times b cubed times p over q minus b times a plus b a which is 3 times b cubed which is 2 cubed 
times b, which is 5, over q minus b. 10, which is q, minus b, which is 2, times a plus b. a is 3, and b is 2. So that's what this is so far. Let's simplify it. So 3 times 2 cubed. I'm going to leave it as 2 cubed. You will see in a second why. And that's a 5. Well, actually, I do, we don't have to do any of this work. I think we can we can handle it in a grown-up method. Watch what happens. 3 plus 2 is 5, and that's a 5. Divide top and bottom by 5, that takes out of this one. Watch what happens again. 10 minus 2, 10 minus 2 here is 8, and this is 8. 2 cubed is 8. So I can take out this guy with this guy. That's it. And the answer is 3. Answer is just 3. Again, one more time. 10 minus 2 is 8, and 2 cubed is 8. So this 2 cubed takes out 10 minus 2. That's it. The answer is 3. Let's move on to number 3. All right. And of course, the beauty of, uh, of this video and this new technology stuff and so forth, unlike sitting in the classroom back in the old days, is that back in the old days, when the, once the teacher finished solving the problem, he or she would uh, erase, the, erase the blackboard and the thing is gone forever. Or you can go back and rewind it and as many times as you want. No big deal. I do not know why I had the urge to point out why I have this urge sometime to point out what my boy would tell me is bloody obvious. Number three. A, a cubed times b to the fourth times c squared times b to the third over a plus b plus c. This is very nasty. Very nasty indeed. Let's find out how nasty it is, in fact. How, nati how nasty it is, in reality. A cubed, 3 cubed, b to the 4th is 2 to the 4th, b is 2, c squared. Ah, voila, c is 0. What do you know? Times 0. Times 0 squared, that is, which is still a 0. Times p. All of this thing is... is Whatever, whatever I'm doing from this point on is, oh boy, where do I write it? It's superfluous. It is gratuitous. From this point on, let's learn this word. Why not? These words are coming out of nowhere. Let's learn this nice word. Gratuitous, gratuitous, and superfluous, which, which which is on page number, on day number, must be the same day, day 47, it would make sense to, for me to cover them on the same day, because they both mean the same thing. Oh, 47, what do you know? So, here's what I'm, here, here's how I was going to use them in the context. Once, listen carefully, once we find out, once we find out that something is being multiplied by zero, from this point on, from this point on, this part that I just did, which is to waste my time, waste our time trying to figure out what p, p cubed is, and then find out the bottom, a plus b plus c, 3 plus 2 plus 0, everything that you see in the red here, this guy right here, and this guy, all of this thing here, was superfluous, was gratuitous. What does it mean, superfluous and gratuitous? Gratuitous means, superfluous means, something that is unneeded, unwanted, unrequired, uncalled for, unnecessary, unwarranted. Why is this, why was this work unnecessary, unwanted, unrequired, uncalled for? Uh, because once we find a zero, zero times anything is zero. Zero times anything, zero times anything, is zero. So this red works. If I if I did continue, unwittingly. Oh boy. I don't know if I don't know if I have covered the word unwittingly. And if we have not, it's a good word to learn. And if we have not covered it, I'm going to put it in my list. Oh, what do you know? We have not covered it. 
which means I better make sure that I know how to spell it unwittingly. To do something unwittingly means to do something unknowing, unknowingly, unknowingly, unbeknownst to you. Oh, here's a good word. Unbeknownst, unbeknownst to you, without being aware of it. So if I were to continue unwittingly, which is without being aware of the fact that I just found a zero, then all of this work would have been superfluous, unnecessary, unwanted, unneeded, unrequired, gratuitous. That was the end of, oh that is not the end of our day. Jesus, I keep babbling. This is only number three. I have to make sure that I put these two words in my list because we want to learn them in the future. These are good words to learn. Anyway, that was number three. Of oh, these numbers that you see there, 47, 47, I, I, I did not explain, I forget here. These are my vocabulary videos. In addition to improving your mathematical skill, you must also improve your vocabulary, your command of the English language, particularly your vocabulary. If in the near future you're planning to sit for the SAT or the GRE or the GMAT, if you're, if you're going to sit for any of these exams or even TOEFL for that matter, if you're sitting for any of these exams, you must have decent vocabulary. And for that, I have put together, while well, I'm in the process of putting together, vocabulary videos, just like I have algebra videos on the YouTube, I have geometry videos on the YouTube. If you want to learn geometry, just type in Kashmani prep dash geometry dash day 13 and you'll see what I did on day 13 in geometry. Just type in Kashmani prep dash vocab dash day 47 and you will learn these two words in in depth, in detail, along with the pronunciation, along with all the other good words. Number four. So number four we have R squared times P times, oh, this is annoying, times R. Why didn't I put down R cubed? a squared b squared times 2 cubed. This should this could be written as r cubed times p or better yet p times r cubed because it is better to go in alphabetical order. Convention dictates that we go in alphabetical order. Convention dictates. Convention is another word for tradition. One meaning of the word convention is Tradition, and I believe it was day number 46, 47, somewhere there. 46. Oh, the day before this day, what do you know? Convention, tradition dictates that we put the variables in alphabetical order. A squared, which is 3 squared. Oh, we haven't done anything yet. So let's start putting the values. So this is r cubed, this and this is r cubed, this is p. p is 5 times r cubed. Let's put it here, p times r cubed. Which is 6 cubed over r is 6 over a squared, which is 3 squared times b squared, which is 2 squared times 2 times q, which is 10. And now we have to evaluate all of that. And for that I need room. And I don't want to erase any of this. This is a dilemma. So I'm going to continue this way. I'm going to erase this part. And continue this way. 5 times 6 cubed, which is 6 times 6 times 6, over 3 squared, which is 3 times 3, times 2 squared, which is 2 times 2, times this 2, times 10. Let's see what happens. I need different color markers in my hand, ready to go, at least three colors, maybe even more. So I have my green, blue, and red. Well, well I see a 6 and I see 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6, well, 3 times 2 is 6, which takes out this 6. I see a 5 and I see a 10, that takes care of this one. And finally, I see a 6, I see a 6, and a 2, I can take out this 2 with this 6 and becomes 3. 
Now when everything else is gone, we have 3 left on the top, 2 left on the bottom, the answer is 3 over 2. Follow. The answer is 3 halves, 1.5. Let's do the next one, number five, the last one. Okay? And of course you can always rewind and watch again uh, whatever you want to do. But it's, it's, I think it's quite explanatory, especially with the colors. One more time, the colors tell me that this three times two is six, that took out this six. This red one tells me that three times two is six, so we took out this three and this two along with this six. And then five was, five was taken out by the ten, and ten becomes two because ten divided by five is two. And then finally, this 6 and this 2, we divide top and the bottom by 2, the 6 becomes 3 and this 2 goes away. So it's 3 over 2. Let's go to the last one. So we can call it a day. A squared times B times P over B times P whole squared. There are two ways you can do this, the smart way and not so smart way. Let's do the smart way. The smart way is that, the smart way is to, is to realize that a squared times b times p over b times p squared is same as b times p, b times p times b times p, b times p, you see, is squared. So now I see this quantity b times p and I see the quantity b times p, that cancels out this one. And it's just a squared over b times p. That's all. a squared is 3 squared over b times p. b is 2 and p is 5. And there is nothing at all we can do here. And I think it will have to remain like this. There is not a lot of hell of a lot we can do here because here on the top we got a 9 and on the bottom we got a 10 so it's just 9 tenth. 9 tenth is the answer that's all that's it we are done for today I will see you tomorrow on day number 11 today was our day number 10 not 9 I always forget to change the number today was our day number 10 we are halfway through the first part of the course which is evaluating algebraic expressions. As you can see, if you've been watching from day one, as you can see, they're getting a little bit more complicated. And as by the time we get to day number 20, they're going to get quite complex. And by that time, if you've been doing all this problem with me, which is a very big if, I have no way of knowing. But if you've been doing, keeping up with it, then you will realize that by that time, by the, guy, by the time we get to day 20, you'll be quite at ease with dealing with algebraic expressions. No matter how nasty they look, they won't freak you out. They won't, uh, they won't intimidate, intimidate you. You will lose your apprehension of dealing with algebraic expressions. It will no longer look like a foreign language. Do you understand? On the other hand, the way I speak English will always continue to be foreign, foreign language to you. But that's a different story altogether. Well, we don't have the time for that today. I will see you tomorrow on day number 11, okay? In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, you can just go to any of these website addresses and send me an email. Alright, thanks.